Today is a historic day when uh, the Singhi endowment has been established at OP Jindal Global University and Jindal Global Law School. Uh, we are indeed very fortunate and deeply grateful to uh, one of India's foremost senior counsels and a distinguished member of parliament, Dr. Abhishek Manu Manasinghi, for instituting the Singhi endowment at OP Jindal Global University. Now, of course, the history of this university is that it was established uh, through a philanthropic initiative of a founding chancellor and factor, Mr. Jindal. But what today Dr. Singhi has done is to elevate the contribution of philanthropy by recognizing the need for providing access to students and creating an institutional ecosystem whereby a lot more young people can have access to high quality education and also to promote the vision of Dr. L.M. Singhvi in ensuring that we create a knowledge ecosystem for promoting institution building at Open to the University. We have with us Dr. L.M. Singhvi and I'm going to ask him in the form of conversation as to what was his vision to establish the Singhi Endowment. Thank you, Dr. Singhi, for this extraordinary uh, act of uh, generous philanthropy. Uh, please share with us your vision to establish the Singhi Endowment. Well, I feel embarrassed uh, with such generous words, but I'm proud that uh, something which I've started almost now 10, 12 years ago, and adding to it gives me immense satisfaction. Before I speak on your university, your very esteemed high level institution. Let me tell you that I have about 400 projects on my MPLED, the Members of Parliament Funds, and it's focused only on education and health in the poorest five districts of Western Rajasthan. And the pleasure it gives when you go and have a digital x-ray machine or a dialysis machine or a mobile ambulance in areas which are genuinely deprived is an unmatchable, indescribable pleasure. Second, I started almost 10 years ago a destitute children's center under Prayas, which does a lot of good work with children. Uh, it's called the Anita Singh, my wife's name, destitute uh, center for destitute children. Then there is thirdly, during COVID times, a mobile ambulance, which was specifically focused at that time on uh, oxygen cylinders, but later on does general uh, medical work. And fourthly, of course, a lot of bar lawyer related bar association donations for chambers, for corpuses, for funds, which goes on. The two more scholastic and directly uh, academic related uh, fundings, which have given me immense satisfaction. The one prior to yours was a Singwe endowment at Cambridge University, my old college, Trinity College, uh, where I spent seven glorious years, lovely years undergraduate, postgraduate, PhD in different capacities. I got married while I was there. My eldest son was born there. And uh, they have started a Singhvi scholarship. And I think the first student is about to start there. And of course, uh, Jiddal, where I've had a long association, uh, described as one of the most dynamic institutions under your stewardship. And I think these topper male entrant, topper female entrant, public law, which has been my subject of PhD, a lecture in memory of my father, which has been going on for a while, but will now be institutionalized by Jinder University. And of course, a, a roundtable discussion, an international conference every year. These are matters which I think promote the subject. They are not linked to me. I may or may not be present, but they are linked to scholastic achievement by students and subjects, both of which will really be very great intersections. And I'm sure under the enormous, uh, almost unbelievable growth of Jindal, this will come to fruition as yet another feather in the cap of this esteemed institution. Thank you, Dr. Uh, since you are a distinguished member of the legal profession, I want to also say that generally in our country, uh, you know, lawyers are not known to be generous in their acts of love. At least they don't have the reputation. Now, you as a distinguished member of the legal profession, you have not only made contributions elsewhere, but today you are making another important is that something that you want to share in terms of the vision that continuously motivates you to contribute towards philanthropy as a distinguished member of the legal profession? See, firstly, uh, it may not be entirely true. There are lawyers who have done generous contributions. But I don't want to do any comparative comment. I am concerned about what I can do. As long as uh, God has been kind, uh, I think in a very fractional, infinitesimal manner, if you give back to society, of course, my donations and my philanthropy is not limited to law because I believe there are a lot of other areas. But certainly promotion of law studies is one area which is very important. 
I think generally speaking, more accurately, not to say that lawyers don't do, after all, you know, successful professionals are always have jokes and jibes about them. As they say, a lawyer uh, rescues his client's estate to keep it for himself. But those are, of course, jibes partly in admiration, partly in a historical context. But I think in India, generally what has happened is that there has been a focus much more, I'm talking of generally, not law, uh, religion. Yes. You will find some amazing endowments in religion. And yet you don't have the Rockefellers, you don't have the Stanfords, the Carnegies, giving to either education or health in the same measure. The distant second to religion has been health much later. Education is still nowhere near a distant third. Right. So I think that's a cultural factor, which of course modern India is changing. Yes. But uh, historically we've been much more prone and there have been what they call Gupt Gyan. Yes. Uh, but for religious purposes. Yes. You wouldn't have a Gupt Gyan for other things. Very true. Very true. You're so right because at the dawn of independence, we all know the story of the establishment of Banaras and University how and this other Mohammadiya personal efforts to raise resources and establish that great institution. So in many ways, uh, the message of philanthropy that you have given, what do you expect uh, to be the, what should Jindal Grover University do to fulfill that vision of philanthropy? That Above you all, I think you have to continue doing what you are already doing, which is remain an institution of excellence. Excellence sometimes becomes a dirty word quite unfairly. It should not signify elitism. It has nothing to do with elitism. Excellence is excellence. Merit is not a dirty word. Uh, success based on perspiration and inspiration. These are values. And I think number two, your interdisciplinary and number three, your global approach. These three things combine to provide a synergy which must be long lasting. Uh, I also believe that dynamic cha vice chancellor like you should remain for eternity. But that's not something one can ensure by endowment. But otherwise, uh, the institution has grown remarkably well and I have, no sure, I have no doubt that the best is yet to come. Thank you very much. Now, of course, last question I have for you is that uh, uh, as you look at this philanthropy act, philanthropy act, one of the things that you're trying to do is to improve the quality of legal education. I know that you have written and spoken a lot about it and its in, uh, in impact and bearing on the future of legal profession. What is the message you have for law schools in relation to legal education? Well, quite frankly, as you know, that could be the subject matter of a lecture by itself and indeed I have been privileged to give, deliver the valedictory on that from your esteemed institution, which is very well received. There are so many issues there, but I think one thing we need to do, we need to stop mushrooming of law colleges and we need to build up and consolidate the good ones we have. We still have islands of excellence. Just because I am so happy with the work we are doing in Jindal, doesn't mean anything because Jindal is not even a drop in a fraction of the ocean that is India. So I think this has to be, you must democratize legal education, but not make a mass McDonald's production factory with no uh, emphasis on quality. So I think building up the quality from bottom downward and starting with cutting off a large number, because you have now factories producing enormous, humongous numbers. I think you start from there, of course, and there are so many things. You must have, for example, I've been speaking about for 10 years, a school for producing law teachers. For that, of course, it's a slogan, but you need to improve the terms. Right. Why will people who will get not even a fraction of what they will in the legal profession choose to go into teaching? Well, thank you very much uh, for this fascinating reflections. As we celebrate the establishment of the Singhvi Endowment, I am, uh, we are all looking forward to the formal unveiling of the Singhvi Endowment by Honorable Mr. Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaur, the Judge of the Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice Michael Wilson, Judge of the Supreme Court of Hawaii, uh, Professor Jayant Krishnan, uh, Professor of India University uh, School of Law Bloomington, uh, in a function that we have in Delhi uh, in early November, on uh, 9th November, which will also be the birth anniversary of Dr. Ellen Singh. So, as we uh, prepare ourselves for that formal unveiling, I want to take this moment to thank Dr. Abhishek Singh for instituting the Singhvi Endowment, which I believe has the potential to transform legal education, but also to inspire a number of young lawyers as well as law students to promote the kind of excellence that Dr. Singhvi believes in. Thank you very much.